Welcome back to PC Hardware Analysis. In this video, we will take a quick look at the storytelling, gameplay and graphics of the Guardians of the Galaxy video game. I've also included a short interview with the actor John McLaren, who portrays the main role of Peter Quill. In the interview, we discuss the strengths of the game and why you might want to try it if you haven't done so yet, which is why I made sure not to include any spoilers in this video. Guardians of the Galaxy was my favorite game of 2021, but I have to preface that by saying that this game is clearly focused on interactive storytelling rather than on highly revolutionary gameplay. While the gameplay itself is still really entertaining, as you will shortly see, I think the storytelling is just on another level. The gameplay clips in this video were all recorded on the RTX 3070 video card. And since we usually focus on performance and graphics on this channel, we will also briefly discuss ray tracing and Nvidia's DLSS feature. So without further ado, let's get right into the storytelling. Guardians of the Galaxy follows the space pirate Peter Quill. That's just it, we're not pirates. We're legally incorporated heroes for hire. Sorry, I mean the hero for hire Peter Quill and his team consisting of Drax, who supposedly killed the mad titan Thanos, Gamora, who calls herself the most dangerous woman in the universe, Rocket, an explosives expert who only happens to look like a raccoon. Definitely not a raccoon and Groot, the last living Flora Colossus. The Guardians set off trying to fulfill contracts to earn money and eventually end up trying to save the galaxy. But instead of summarizing the whole plot itself, let's discuss what makes the storytelling so special here. One major element is the chemistry between the Guardians. The team has only been together for a rather short time and throughout the story you can witness a lot of funny conflicts between them. You're just jealous my plan's better. You're green with envy. Better than black and blue. I'm sure you can trust Gamora with that thing that I was definitely paying attention to. The voice actors, of course, play a big part in why the dialogue works so well. It does really sound like they genuinely had a lot of fun recording those lines. What's more, there's an incredible amount of in-game dialogue to be found here. While you traverse each level, the Guardians will constantly talk to each other, often directly referring to the action on screen, yet other times talking about more personal topics. Sometimes you also get to actively participate in those dialogues through decisions. If you just rush through each level as quickly as possible, you will actually never hear a lot of this dialogue, which is why I would highly recommend you to take your time. Even if you absolutely stand still doing nothing, the Guardians will usually still continue their dialogues for at least two minutes. Nova Centurions probably had to tow all the scrap to one place. Of course, it's not just about the amount of dialogue on offer here. Most of it is also incredibly well written. There's a lot of insanely funny situational comedy and jokes. Here's an example from my first playthrough where you can hear me bursting into laughter in the background. Aren't you a little young for the core? Aren't you a little old for that hairdo? <laughs> I should check with the captain. <laughs> no. Another funny theme throughout the whole game is how Peter thinks that he's extremely famous and good with women, but people always tend to forget his name or even ignore him and his reactions are just priceless. Hi! Sunlord, right? Or is it Rockstar? It's Starlord. Hey, that's right. I forget which version of you I've met. Don't worry, man. I got this. Women love me. Hey there. Hi. Uh, I'm Starlord. <sighs> Lucky me. The game also heavily relies on facial motion capture to get a lot of those jokes across. Up to this point, I really haven't played or seen any other game where the facial motion, even down to the eyes, is that believable. I seriously have no idea what you're talking about. Initiate not lockdown. It's these moments where the motion capturing 
the brilliant writing and the voice acting really come together that make you almost forget you're playing a game. There are also quite emotional and sad moments as a contrast to the otherwise light-hearted nature of this game. Some of these moments are also optional, meaning you could easily miss them if you don't explore everything. When you get to the chapter set in nowhere, make sure to walk up to Drax in this location here. The optional dialogue you'll hear between Peter and Drax is one of John McLaren's favorite moments in the whole game. With all of the character building achieved through the hours of dialogue, it's really easy to connect with each of the Guardians in those more emotional scenes. Another theme running throughout the whole game is that things are often not as they seem. Due to potential spoilers, I can't go into detail here, but I'll say this much. The game will play with your emotions and expectations on your first playthrough it's always weird the first time. in ways that genuinely confused me, but in a good way. Lastly, the awesome 80s soundtrack definitely deserves a mention, as it heavily contributes to the atmosphere of the story and gameplay. Oh, 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 it's a song, right? It is. Of course it's a song. Due to copyright reasons, I unfortunately can't play any of those songs, but I can tell you an anecdote instead. It was a really unique experience to fight a boss battle with Rick Astley's Never Gonna Give You Up kicking in through Peter's cassette player. The licensed songs are also quite well integrated into the game's universe, as the Guardians sometimes sing them together. Sing with me, Vita! Driving through the pouring rain! Let's start with the most exciting part of the gameplay, the fighting system. In between the dialogues and level traversal, you will run into groups of enemies or bosses every now and then. On the battlefield, you partially control the guardians by telling them when and on which enemies to use their special abilities, but otherwise they fight automatically. A nice touch is that the in-game time slows down while you make your strategic choices. What's more, you can also tell the Guardians to use objects in the environment, like explosive tanks or rocks, against your enemies. And of course, you control Peter Quill at the same time, who has his own set of abilities. As you can see here, when all elements come together in battle, it can become quite chaotic. When you chain together all of the special abilities, fights can turn into quite the adrenaline rush and it's a sight to see. Whenever you have killed a certain amount of enemies, a meter will be filled up that allows you to enter the huddle up mode. Peter will summon all of the guardians during a fight to give them a pep talk, resulting in boosted stats, and a random song from his cassette player will kick in during gameplay. Some of the enemies are only vulnerable to a certain kind of attack or element, adding a little more variety and keeping you from mindlessly spamming random attacks. Enemies also have stagger bars that, when filled up, allow you to deal extra damage. There isn't really a huge amount of unlockable special attacks, but I found that most of them are really useful, aside from one or two. Additional upgrades for Peter and his rocket boots can be bought with scrap parts hidden throughout each level. You can also find new outfits for every Guardian. There are also a couple of environmental puzzles for which you either need to move platforms or connect electrical circuits to advance. Those puzzles are generally on the easier side, so it's unlikely that you'll get stuck for too long. They add a little bit of additional variety to the gameplay and don't overstay their welcome. Each of the Guardians has a context-bound ability, like cutting down bushes, moving heavy objects or hacking doors, that you manually have to trigger in the right place. If you accidentally pick the wrong guardian for, say, hacking a door, there's unique dialogues written for each of those occasions, so even that can be entertaining. Lastly, given that this game focuses on storytelling, there's of course going to be some quick time events here. They aren't used too much though, and when they appear, they appear in really eye-catching set-piece moments that are entertaining to watch. There's also a couple of scripted on-rails scenes in which you either control Peter's ship or try to run away from something on foot.
In Guardians, ray tracing adds accurate reflections to most metal, glass and water surfaces. Given the sci-fi setting, there's actually many locations in which ray tracing drastically improves the game's appearance. In some cutscenes you also directly benefit from ray tracing, with camera shots focusing on reflective surfaces. I'd recommend using the lowest ray tracing preset, as the higher ones only make reflections sharper and less pixelated, but come with a big performance cost. One interesting thing here is that character models have lower details in reflections, but that's something you'd only notice if you really look out for it. On the flip side, it's amazing to be able to see characters walking in the background being reflected in glass. Something you also really wouldn't notice much, but that's still cool, is that the game world is reflected in each character's eyes. And generally speaking, just look at the quality of those textures. The amount of detail on skin and clothes is really almost absurd to the degree that they hold up, even on close inspection when using the in-game camera. Let us now take a quick look at how good NVIDIA's DLSS upscaling is in this game. Instead of rendering the game at your monitor's full resolution, which is 4K in my case, DLSS allows you to use a lower resolution and get more frames per second, while at the same time also still providing decent image quality. Using machine learning, DLSS takes a low resolution and makes an educated guess on what the game should look like if it were actually running a true 4K, for example. Overall, I'd say DLSS works extremely well in Guardians. Even in quickly moving scenes, you can't really see any kind of smearing. In fact, most of the gameplay you saw throughout this video used the best DLSS quality mode at 4K. The RTX 3070 has 30 FPS in this scene using true 4K with ray tracing. If you enable DLSS balance quality, it scores 50 FPS, and with DLSS ultra performance, it scores 63 FPS. The craziest thing here is that DLSS ultra performance uses only 720p upscale to 4K, yet still looks somewhat playable throughout most of the game. As you can see, DLSS using 720p looks way more detailed than normal 720p. The most practical mode I think is DLSS Balance though. It is quite close to true 4K, except for being a bit softer, but offers 66% more performance. There's really no reason not to enable DLSS if you have an RTX video card of any kind. Man, how you doing? Hey, it's so great to finally talk to you. I know you, you. I know you. <laughs> <laughs> how you doing, man? Yeah, I'm, I'm great. I'm great. And you? <laughs> I'm good, man. I'm good, man. Having a good day. Right on. Well, I'm glad you're here, man. Thank you for reaching out. I appreciate it. Yeah, so um, I prepared a few questions that we sure. could maybe talk about. Of course. Um, and I would maybe like to integrate that into a YouTube video that I'm working on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, the first question would be, um, what would you say to someone who is on the fence of buying the Guardians game? What would I say to them? Don't sleep on it, get on it <laughs> right away. No, I mean, I think it's, uh, again, we, we said in the Q&A, but it, it's an incredible story. It's, it's to me, it, it's not just another superhero video game. Um, it's got a lot of heart, a lot of, uh, a lot of care went into the making it for myself as well as the entire team not only actor wise but also from from idos uh the team was absolutely incredible they've cra they've crafted a an unbelievable world uh to go and, and experience and the the story is uh bar none one of the best so if if you love uh, story based uh, story driven games please go check it out it's it's incredible yeah, I absolutely have to agree on that one. The story is, I think, like 20 hours long. Yeah, I think it's around 20 hours, depending on... Yeah, it depends on your play style, but yeah. 
and it really runs the full gamut from like emotional scenes to really funny scenes at one point you're laughing and then you're really sad it's really everything in there <laughs> yes the uh the team the writers are some of the best i've worked with there's a reason why they won best narrative at the uh, the game awards this past year it's just the the work they did on this is phenomenal okay um then the next question would be um Unlike many AAA games nowadays, Guardians is not an open world game. Which advantages mm -hmm. or disadvantages do you see in more guided tunnel level games? Um, I think, I think again, where where the games, one of the the strongest points in this game is its story. And I feel like with open world games, sometimes it's hard to keep a a, a cohesive story. Uh, you'll see it in a lot of open world games. You could just by proxy of being able to travel and go wherever you want, uh, you kind of lose, not always, but you lose a lot of the time, the ability to have a, a really strong, cohesive story. And, and so with Guardians, uh, it being a little bit more linear, um, again, it, it's it's not open world, but it's, it's kind of open choice in a way because there's so many different dialogue choices, but it does maintain a very cohesive and, and incredibly strong story and it's one of the strongest points of the game so yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um uh, what i think generally is that in such tunnel level games there's much more meaning to every corner of the of the levels because in an open world game you often have huge areas that are completely meaningless there's no content in it yeah and and everything in guardians because it because it is a story driven experience it's it's been exactly what you just said it's been very particularly crafted so that every moment uh, in the game has meaning or has an impact on you the player and i think that's what makes it such an incredible game um okay then the next question would be um you already answered that a little bit in my cameo what was the funniest blooper moment behind the scenes for you, aside from forgetting to turn on your mocap light? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, I always would forget to turn on my, my mocap light. I get yelled at like every day, but um, we used to, uh, we used to get breakfast every morning. And part of that was a, a box of pastries. And there was always one and only one blueberry scone. And Daryl Purdy, our cinematic director, loved that scone. So we would make it a, uh, we would make it our mission to get there first, steal it, and then hide it somewhere around the office. Like sometimes in people's like coat jackets pockets, like we would totally mess with them. It was so, it was so much fun. <laughs> yeah, maybe a more a personal question. So um, sure. what are you excited about regarding the near future of gaming? Uh, I think just with the way that um, technology is going, I know I'm keeping an eye on the time here. Um, I just think with the advancements in technology and it jumps so quickly now because of that, because of the animation, because of the storytelling, because of all these parts that make games games, it gives us such a, hold on one sec. It gives us a much, uh, it just, it continuously makes the storytelling medium that much stronger and i think that you can tell stories um in a you know a 20 40 60 sometimes 100 hour plus game you have that much more time to tell an epic story that you just can't do um in film because you don't have enough time to tell you know a story in in two hours when you compare it to the video game medium and i i think it's I think it's something very special. So that's what I'm most excited about. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you're already familiar with that. There was this Matrix Awakens demo, uh, a game demo using Unreal Engine that looks yes. basically exactly like the real movie. And I think that's really amazing that we're already reaching this point on those new consoles. I know. Soon. It's, it's incredible, man. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much. I really appreciate uh, you taking the time, man. This has been a lot of fun. It was good to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one.